on. There's a lot of Obama people in the White House. And a lot of us think that this is really the third term of Barack Obama, that he's behind the scenes, he's pulling the strings, and that Joe Biden is just, you know, there. Uh, and so this is just another example of it. We, we, we can see what's going on. The American people see, can see what's going on. And, uh, and they're desperate now to try to try to hide what's really going on with Joe Biden. Yeah, that's Florida Congressman Carlos Jimenez saying that Obama really is in charge of the White House pulling the strings. You guys remember that? I mean, it's kind of funny. It's easy to forget those things now that Mr. Biden's, President Biden has dropped out of the race. But that was right after the G7 conference when the right tried to accuse Biden of wandering off when actually he was over, he was saying hello to the parachutes that had dropped in from the military. Uh, this is who he is, another, yet another MAGA. He's a first-term congressman from the Miami-Dade area and all the way down to the Keys, former mayor of uh, former mayor of Miami. But this is the typical thing. You know, go on Newsmax and say crazy stuff. How typical is he? He's just one term, but he's managed to accomplish a lot. For example, of course, he's an election denier. Here he is explaining his position for rejecting electoral college votes. So on that day, Congressman, you voted against certifying the results of the election in two states. Now, those two two states states would not have changed the ultimate outcome of the election. You have said Biden is the legitimate president of this country. But -hmm. you know that 67% of people, according to the latest CBS poll of Republicans, I'm sorry, do not believe Joe Biden is the legitimate winner of the 2020 election. Do you have any regrets about how your vote fed into what Trump was saying? He linked those things together, his lie, that that could be contributing to Republicans refusing to accept a legitimate president. Absolutely. I have no regrets of my votes on on that day. I voted not to impeach the president because I didn't think he incited the uh, the events that happened. I know for a fact that uh, I saw people in my hotel room that were saying they were going to do something at two o'clock and that happened at nine o'clock in the morning. And I also know and, and I still believe that uh, Arizona and Pennsylvania, the election laws were violated and that the uh, the legislature, who is the rightful uh, place where these laws are made, uh, those laws were violated. And that's the reason why I voted not to certify Arizona and Pennsylvania. Yeah, he's been a busy beaver for a first term congressman, but he's not in the district much. He's not there at all from what we hear. In the meantime, Phil Ayers, a Democratic co- candidate running against him. He's already gotten the nomination. He's the only guy running. Phil's run, run before. He actually took on Matt Gates, where he lived up, up further north in, in Florida. But now he's taken on Carlos Jimenez, and he's got a great story. He's like a great leader, and he's a great candidate. So I really want to get Phil in the hot seat this cycle, give a chat to him, talk about what he's doing and, and what that region of the country needs from their congressman. So let's get on with the show. I am Fred Wellman of On Democracy, the FPM1, right here in the Minds Touch Network, and this is In the Hot Seat. With Phil Air. Phil, it's so good to connect with you. I've been dying to get you here on the Minus Touch Network and in the hot seat talk. Uh, hello from Florida, I guess, huh? Yeah, that's right. You and I have met uh, a few times before, and I so much appreciate reconnecting with you and, and your audience because uh, they are super cool, and you're okay, too. <laughs> Uh, well, they're, they're better than I am, but they're a cool bunch. <laughs> you know, you spent 26 years in the Navy, um, and, and after you left the Navy, you continued your public service, serving your communities and your nation, even went to Ukraine to deliver aid, and now you're running for office again. What's driving you and your desire to serve Congress and, you know, serve your community again? Well, it's, you know, you and I both served in the U- U.S. military, and it's and it's it's an oath that we took, and our country yeah. is, you know, by every measure, by everybody's observation, in freaking trouble. So we don't have the option of standing on the sidelines. There are lots of different ways to help. I happen to be in a good place where my family's set and I, 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 need to, I need to run for office because in my district, there are some people that have compromised themselves and have gone over to buying into just a set of uh, lies and propaganda that we need to, to cut, cut back. Yeah, I'd open with a couple of videos of your opponent, you know, talking, denying the election results, of course, and of course saying some ridiculous stuff about Obama still being in charge. You know, I mean, he's got a weird, a weird priority as opposed to taking care of the good people of Florida. And, you know, I, I follow a lot of the events in Florida. I have two brothers that live in Florida. You guys are dealing with a high cost of living, but it isn't inflation. It's a lot of it has to do with spiraling property insurance rates. I mean, that's a real crisis down there, isn't it? It, it, it is. It's, you know, I go knocking on doors and the, the things that I hear, first of all, is, and just to go back on my opponent, the guy is not here. He has turned his yeah. back on local problems like the rising cost of living. All he can do is is complain about it. But we have people who are really hurt. We can see it in their eyes. You see, my, my kids are not going to be able to live here because we can't afford a home. And uh, property insurance in Florida is part of that, a big part of it, but so is overdevelopment. So is just the out of control of pricing. So on property insurance, a Tallahassee 
created uh, or not fixed problem, although they put words to it. They've mismanaged a lot of things. They mismanaged the insurance industry and they mismanaged the, uh, the, the they set up a an insurer of last resort from the state of Florida uh, that is not being managed well. Now it's being taken over by corporate interests that are just not not being not being uh, you know overseen properly. But what the federal government can do is not only the bully pulpit general general uh, you know um, so, solution set, but also we can introduce bills to spread the risk uh, across the nation or across Florida and include those other. Those other natural disasters are happening across the country because we need to face the facts of greater uh, greater damage due to uh, rising sea levels out here in, in the Florida Keys as part of my district. I'll tell you what, there, there's a big problem in the Florida Keys. As we look at the map of the United States and you look at, at uh, what's happening with uh, with our environment, you know, that these are one of the uh, places that might be, you know, or that is at risk all the time. Yeah. So uh, rising insurance rates can be ha ha tackled from the uh, from the federal government, and I'm going to be doing uh, just that. Well, I think you know it's a national issue. We're having more natural disasters. I live in Missouri. Of course, we have more tornadoes and bigger storms. We're having record rains ourselves here in Missouri. It's causing floods. A town not far from me got flooded out. It is it's just a creek because I'm near any big river. So so you're right. I do think there is a national solution to that. And I'm glad you're thinking that way. But you know, another unique thing about Florida, of course, we all joke about it, right? Is, is the old folks, right? Like Florida is I've got I've got I've got family members who are snowbirds, <laughs> you know, and but you know, they're worried about the future. And we do hear the Republicans making noise about social security raising the age, and they're they're literally saying they want people to work longer, it's good for the economy. Um, I mean social security and Medicare and Medicaid really are in danger this cycle, aren't they? They, they are. And the issue and the, the problem or the solution direction for that is looking at the revenue side of it, not the cutting benefit side. Mm -hmm. And this is a prime example of a difference between a philosophy of, say, normal Republicans that would want to cut, cut, cut. Uh, and uh, and normal Democrats like myself, although I've been a Republican for 37 years, I switched for obvious reasons associated with 2016, et cetera. Yeah. But um, we want, you know, want, we're looking for practical solutions for people. We live in a country where the common good is a thing in the Constitution, and we have the the ability and the, and the duty to, you know, live in dignity in our older years and, and in times during our, our other times when we need it. So, you know, the villages here, Fred, is a yeah. place where a lot of people go. And I don't know if you've seen the news lately, and it's not in my district, but it's emblematic of Florida. They're having like the Trump signs there are 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 waning. I mean, they're 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 they exist, but they're the Biden signs blew up. And now that uh Kamala Harris is is leading the ticket with Tim Walls there, I'll tell you what, I haven't been up there since, but I'll bet you they're as excited as we are down here in Miami-Dade County and yeah. the Florida Keys. We are seeing yeah. lots of excitement to fix problems like Social Security and insurance and, uh, you know, FEMA. FEMA is not funded properly. And my guy, Jimenez, is just, you know, not dealing with that issue. Yeah, and it is a huge issue. And it's only going to get worse as, as more hurricanes are popping in your neighborhood. You know, you also, I believe Florida does have reproductive rights on the ballot this fall. Yes. Uh, 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 they're going to have a constitutional amendment right going on there. That is in the ballot. We say it in every interview I do. I talk to every candidate. I, I don't know if my viewers are tired of hearing it, but the fact is abortion's on the ballot. Uh, it is great to see, I imagine it's good to see uh, Vice President Harris and, 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 and of course, uh, Governor Waltz be so forward about bringing this right. issue front and center that women's right to choose and 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 the, and the quality health care is on the ballot isn't it it, it is so in florida we have a, a, a an effective six week ban right now and that is contrasted on the ballot with what we call uh, amendment four to the on, on the uh or yeah amendment four on the, on the ballot and that is going mm -hmm. to essentially reinstate uh roe v wade type of uh framework for dealing mm -hmm. uh, with this fundamental right that people have and uh, as a member of Congress, I want to join the administration in codifying Roe v. Wade. And we can you know, discuss how that actually happens. But that's the bottom line. The bottom line is government needs to get out of those kinds of decisions. And like Tim Wall said the other day, there's a golden rule. <laughs> Mind your own damn business, right? Mind your own damn business. That's and that's what we grew up on. And, you know, we laugh. You know, that used to be a Republican thing, right? It was like live and let die, you know, live and live free and all those sorts of things. But for some reason, it's become the opposite of that. Uh, the, the, I think they still think that the, 
the nanny state is a thing, but truly it's them becoming the nanny state or even even the doctor state, <laughs> the birth control state. You know, an interesting thing I looked, you know, I was looking at your website about your priorities and, and, and you are, a, you're a different kind of Democrat. You, you put there, you put border security right there up front. You talk about border security, but you also talk about immigration reform in the same breath. Yeah. I want to hear your take on that. It's a little bit different. Okay, for so Democrat. these two issues, border security and immigration, they're hand in glove issues. You can't do yep. one without the other. And some of my background in, in the United States Navy was was helping the joint interagency task forces, consulting with them both on the maritime borders and the land border for a tiny bit. But but overall, it's a big issue here. We have a whole lot of differ, different uh, uh, nationalities of new people that have come since the Mario book, since the 1950s in Cuba yeah. and, be, and before that, actually. But the big waves have come to South Florida. Everybody is concerned about it. Everybody, it's in the background of everything we do here. So um, it is a huge issue and you need to be strong on it. You need to be strong on something that you and I, you know, most Americans are. We need to get control of that border. That border is not secure and it must be secure for the general um, migrant control issues. But also we're living in the, in the post 9-11 era where it, it is a, a, a added risk to to uh, people who would do us physical harm in a terrorist way. So um, I, I, I've got the pro the you know the background to be able to deal with it, and to do it in a way that my opponent is not. What does my opponent do? He's one of these people that goes down and just yells and doesn't offer solutions. And when presented a solution, such as the bipartisan bill that the Senate passed. That has a lot of good common sense uh, solutions in there. Some that you know the, the the Democrats on their own wouldn't like really to do, yeah. but we can do it. It's resources for for the border patrol. It's resources for for uh, finding and detecting fentanyl, and it's resources for part of our uh, part of our core values of giving people who are claiming asylum a proper uh, hearing on it. And that hearing needs to be with a raised a uh, credible fear standard in, in the immigration side of it. So um, yeah. we can do all these things. That's what the border uh, uh, border security and immigration bill has did proposed, and that's what we need to do um, going forward. And of course, key to all that is we do have to have more better legal pathways to immigration so that people aren't forced to try and cross uh, in a dangerous fashion or in a way that's unsecure, right? I mean, we right. continue to see that. And that was part of that border bill was some, you know, looking at the way we do visas, look at the waivers we provide and, and, and giving more asylum officers in cases, right? I mean, that's Absolutely. the other side of the coin is it would reduce the flow in addition to increasing security in it. Right. And, and match it up to with our, with our economic needs and, and our overall humanitarian uh, you know, values, as well as uh, making sure that we're not overdoing it, um, but we're but we're doing things right. You know, my grandfather used to talk about the Italians who used to come over and, and oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, the Italians are going to kill us. Right. But he didn't actually say that. But he was outlining for me the argument of the day back in the back in the early 60s. Or he was, you know, yeah. even going farther back to the 40s and 50s. But. Um, and there's been wave after wave. And um, yes, we are a nation that has borders. And yes, we are a nation that is the land of the free and where freedom, like individual decisions on, on, on your body and like individual decisions on what you, how you associate with people um, and how you, uh, how you go about your business is not dependent on you know skin, heritage or any of that stuff. And that yeah. is something that the blood and guts folks that come from Putinville are putting on the MAGA party. And they just they're just so off base in that regard. Well, we can't lose sight of our values. Well, Phil, I really appreciate this. Nice quick talk. The most important question I ask every single of my candidates that come on the show, how can the Midas Mighty help you, find you? Where can they throw a couple of bucks to help you win this race? Uh, how how can they cut you down? That's great. So thank you, Veris. It's my website is airforcongress.us. So going uh, NATO phonetic on you, it's Echo Hotel Romeo, <laughs> F-O-R, Congress.us, E-H-R-F-O-R, Congress.us. And we would very much appreciate your financial support. We have a great field program now that it's, what, August? We can go through November. I am the Democratic nominee ahead of the primary. And so it's mano a mano all the way through. We've got a great team and a very rigorous uh, plan. We need the funding to execute it fully. Thank you very much. I love it. Well, we wish you the best of luck, brother. Good stuff. And, and thanks for continuing to serve. I mean, we, I always love talking to my fellow veterans. I love talking to candidates who've run before and learned some lessons. Yeah. So we wish you the best of luck. Oh, thank you, Fred. All the very best.
Another great conversation. Another veteran. Got to love that. Navy veteran Phil Ayers running for Congress down there in the 28th District of Florida. Give him a shout if you get a chance. Keep him support. Look, these races are so important across the country. You guys know I say it often. We run everywhere. We win everywhere. And now with Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Walsh running, uh, I think the, the shift is occurring. So it's a great time to be a part of this movement. And you know, you know the deal. I always tell you, it's up to us. To get in the fight. As always, I'm Fred Wellman, host of On Democracy with F.P. Wellman, right here on the Myers Touch Network. We premiere new episodes every Friday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'd love to see you there. In the meantime, keep up the fight. We're in this to win it.